this one is exercise 3 of beams from your td workbooks year 12 so if you look at the question there it says a beam is drawn to a scale of 1 is to 50 1 is to 50 is your space diagram scale and a log line scale of 1 mm is 5 newtons so the questions will remain same as before you have to find the magnitude of rl and rr funicular polygon find maximum bending moment position and resultant of rr or position of the resultant relative to rr free and sketch of the typical beam and also the cfos diagram so let's start with our question the first thing we have to do is the, the bose notation bose notation rl 260 that will be our space a 160 240 is our space b 140 to 90 is space c this is a little bit different question as you can see then 90 to rr is space t and then rr to rl will be space e your load line is 1 mm is to 5 newtons so this means all the values that is given here all the forces have to be divided by 5 then put it on our load line as you can see 160 divided by 5 is 32 140 divided by 5 is 28 and 90 divided by 5 is 18 so I measured 32 28 and 18 so A to B 32, B to C 28 and C to D is 18. I have joined all the points to O and I got a polar diagram. So after I got the polar diagram, your next step is to draw the funicular polygon. To draw the funicular polygon, you have to take all the forces and the supports of the reaction straight vertically down. Right, as you can see, I have taken RL. 160, 140, RR and 90 newtons straight down. I'm going to take A0, put it on my space A, B0, put it on my space B, C0 on C, D0 and D, and then I'll get the E0, which will be our closer. Before I actually transfer this, I'll take my D, because from there, upwards will be my CFOs. So I can use this space to draw my penicular polygon. Right, so that's my A0. right here from here I will transfer my B0 and that's my B0 right, so if I look at my C0 it is not from here till there your C is from 140 to 90 this means your C is going to go right through there then from there you are going to come back for D and your E will be from RL to RR right so that's my C0 we will transfer it from here there it's not that you stop one at one line then go to the other one no. you have to look at the space so c is from here to there this means this is my c0 so when i take my d0 it will be from here till there that's your d0 right c is from here to there that's your c0 from here to there will be your d0 
take it parallel to your T0 then you transfer it from here till there and that is your T0 now your E is from RL to RL can label the diagram as funicular polygon now you're going to transfer your closer from here till there right you have to take it parallel to this one and then you transfer it there parallel to the closer and we'll take and I will transfer it here And that is your point e. RL E to I so measure E to I write your answer here RR D to E measure D to E write your answer there right so when I measure E to I I get 25 there, 25 times 5 is going to give me 140 because you have to multiply by 5, it says 1 mm is 5 newtons and when I measure D to E the distance I multiply with 5 and I'm going to get 250 newtons so 250 plus 140 should be equal to 160 plus 140 plus 90 so in my case both the answers are correct right now you can calculate the maximum bending moment of the beam and to that to do that first of all you have to find the bending moment scale right we are supposed to find the bending moment maximum bending moment so bending moment calculation First of all, we find the bending moment scale, which is load line scale times polar distance times space diagram scale. So, load line scale is 1 is to 5, this means we'll take 5 newtons there. Your polar distance here to there is 80, and your space diagram is 1 is to 50. Right, your space diagram is 1 is to 50. So, 50 divided by 1000 because we have to use it in meters. Whatever your space diagram is, we have to always divide it by 1000. So 5 times 80 times 50 divided by 1000 is going to give you 20 Newton meter. This means every 1 mm that I measure from my funicular polygon will be giving a bending moment of 20 Newton meter. So if I look at 160 Newtons, I have a, four, I have a distance of 12 there. If I look at 140 Newtons, I have a distance of 8. I don't have to measure this because this is for RR we only have to look at the forces so the last force 90 doesn't have any distance so the maximum here is 12 so what I'll do 12 multiplied by 20 that is going to give me 12 times 20 is going to give us 240 newton meter this means our maximum bending moment is 240 newton meter I can also write down the forces here the reactions 250 newton here 140 newton there this one as usual you can draw I beam or whichever appropriate 
memes you can find in your exercise book you can also make a sketch of that for the shear force diagram so first of all we need to take all the forces a b c d e across and likewise you make for example a will be dark in the space a b will be dark in the space b so continue like that and before we move on to the shear force diagram we have to locate the position of the resultant relative to rr so you want to extend the first force which is a0 extend the last force which is d0 where they intersect right that is almost close to 140 newtons so maybe same as 140 newtons it's in the same line so here i can also draw a double arrow write down resultant with a force of 390 newtons now it says relative to rr so relative to rr means we are going to measure this distance from 140 till rr so that is coming somewhere 10 47 so 47 mm multiply by 50 is going to give you the final answer so first line is a that is my space a from this rl 260 and make that much dark this is e so we leave that for a while we go to b b is from 160 to 140 so i'll make this much dark here c is from 140 to 90 this means c is going to be dark till there and d is from 90 to rr so that is d and the last one e is from rr to rl so from here till there this will be joined to b this will be going to C, this will be going to D, and this is going to go on top D. So that is going to give us zero shear. That is positive shear, and that is active shear. this one is exercise 4 similar manner what we have done in exercise 1 2 and 3 you can do it in exercise 4 i will help you with the post notation here and a little bit explanation on how to get the particular polygon the others you should be able to do it yourself right so rl to 90 will be a 90 to 100 will be b 100 230 will be c 130 to 80 will be d and then 80 to rr will be e then rr to rl will be f so scale is 1 mm is to 5 kn a to b will be 90 so 90 divided by 5 will get your b b to c is 100 100 divided by 5 will get your c c to d is 130 which will be divided by 5 and d to e is 80 you will divide it by 5 join it all there now the main thing is your funicular polygon so after you get your polar diagram here your funicular polygon should look something like this so i'll take all those forces down right i'll take all those forces down Now when I take A0, A will be spaced here, from 
from here to there that will be a now when i take b0 this is my when i take b0 b starts from this line so from there i'll take it b c d then e is going to come back again and my f is going to be here to there right so you have to be very careful with the spaces i there this is a startup sketch your diagram can be far but the concept will be same right this can be i now b is going to start from here 9200 so from that point you're going to start with b that will be your b0 then from here will be your c0 from here till there only it will be your c0 and from here till there will be your d0 so here to there is your d0 and then this will be your e0 and f0 will be from here to there right okay, let's look at exercise 5 now here this is something different all the questions we have started our a from this side but if i straight start my a from this side i'll have a to b then b to c c to d like that this means i don't know the value for a b and b c right so i start my a from here whenever you have your reactions on the upper side your i is going to start from your right hand side this will be your B, this will be your C, and this will be your D. Right, so you'll get your A to B, 300, divided by 10, B to C, 500, divided by 10. And likewise, this will all go straight down. This will be your space A, this will be your space B, this is your space C and this will be your space D. It's like your funicular polygon will be upside down. And the other concepts will be same as what we have done in exercise 1, 2 and 3.